Our beliefs affect every aspect of our lives. If we don't question the beliefs we formed as children and why we choose to continue to believe them as adults, we may only be limiting ourselves. I remember being told that I was weird and that no one would ever like me or want to be my friend. Deep down, I really began to believe that. Throughout my life, I tried to be alone. I tried to stay and avoid groups. It just seemed like I always had friends anyway. People reached out to me and I still didn't realize or see that. All I saw was, and all I believed was what I was told. One of the phrases I heard as a child was stop. Be careful, you're gonna break that. I didn't like the feeling of knowing that I was gonna break something because there was truth in that. I did break quite a few things. I felt a quite a bit of shame and then I would feel guilty because the way they communicated was that I was a bad kid. And who wants to be a bad kid? One of the phrases I heard a lot was, you're too sensitive, you're too much, you have way too much going on emotionally, and that really caused me to hide my, my feelings a lot and to feel ashamed of who I was, this flowy, watery, emotional human being. Growing up, I was very active. There was one year where I really wanted to make the team, and I gave it my all, and I didn't make it. That experience made me feel like giving my all was not good enough. So my childhood, I lacked a lot of freedom to be able to express who I was, my creativity. It made me feel like I didn't really know where I fit in and I didn't really have any clear understanding of who I was because I lacked those fundamental abilities to be able to express myself freely without feeling like there was some judgment or some fear surrounding my self-expression. As a child, I was told that I was thin-skinned and sensitive all the time, so that made me not want to show my real emotions and put up a wall between myself and others. And that impacted me ferociously because it made me not want to be myself, which is an emotional person. I'm very emotional, and I wear my heart on my sleeve. I was born into a humongous family. I have fond memories of like being in the living room at my grandparents' house and to 20, 20 some odd people sitting around and my dad would be playing guitar and everyone would be singing, beautiful harmonies. Also being too timid to open my mouth and sing along with them because I was afraid I was going to mess it up. It sounded so good. I went through the first like 20 years of my life before I ever felt like I could sing or should. So at 28, I reconnected with a childhood friend and we got married. She was also ill and the illness eventually took her life. The depth of that relationship became a contrast and a benchmark for many relationships that followed. There was an expectation from myself that I would go as deep as I had with that marriage. It took me a long time to figure out I thought the woman was the one that wasn't showing up, and she wasn't, but neither was I. And that message from my childhood Without my conscious awareness, that stop, that be careful, that you're gonna break something, was coming up again. In high school, I would just start having these little outbursts of emotion that I knew weren't normal. It wasn't until I moved to Asheville that I was able to meet people that allowed me to be myself. So it really was the help of others who already had experience with being open. And when you stop feeding into the awkwardness, that's not often actually there and you can realize that you can just be yourself and people will take you for whoever you are at that moment. I had this idea that if you were going to open your mouth and sing or if you're going to produce art that it had to, to meet some expectation level. Somewhere that changed. I became fond of listening to Ben Harper's music. To see someone who had reached that level who was not concerned with perfection. I don't feel like I, I have some obligation to sit up there and put on a perfect show for anyone because well, my life's not going to be perfect, I'm never going to be perfect, but what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what I have, what I'm feeling that day, tomorrow, whatever day it is. I'm proud of my bigness and my emotions and my sensitivities and I had to be challenged to really step into them by my family members and without that commitment and that drive for me to be authentic and for me to get vulnerable with people, I don't feel like I'm able to really accept big 
unconditional, just all-encompassing love. I never finished college. The athletic experience definitely hindered my progress. I went to a self-help convention and it was in the, the Hornets arena. So imagine 20,000 people all in the same shoes as you, feeling that they can't get, get better or be better. Just told me and rearranged my thinking into believing in myself a, a whole lot more than I did before, a whole lot more. So I used to think that if I expressed myself, that people wouldn't accept me for who I was. And I have definitely came to realize expressing yourself and who you are and allowing your true colors to come through, that's how real connections are made. Booty Yoga has really pushed me out of this box and expanded my walls. I've been able to express myself in dance and you know have an amazing time in class. We sweat together. But then we also have this connection outside of our practice that is super important for all of us in our lives. So I used to believe if I tried to make friends that I will lead myself up for failure and that person won't want to be friends with me and I'll be rejected or I'll be so defined by that friendship that I won't be able to survive without it and I'll become too dependent on it. It was such a limitation for me. Now I'm starting to have like almost a group of friends. I mean, there's so much power in rewriting your beliefs. There's so much power in unbelieving them in a way. I think if you don't do that, you miss out on an opportunity to be happier and to be more at peace with yourself. All these years, I could have been making friendships with people and cultivating that if I had only understood that that belief was there. A really important component of this work is identifying the belief system so you can start to unpack it. For me, what the ultimate medicine is, is the unpacking process, the relaxing, the surrendering, the letting the love flow and the opening. Whether you do it in a powerful masculine way or whether you do it in a flowing feminine way, surrendering to it and coming back to that center, to the being self-led, to being open to the creative dive and not knowing how it's gonna come out. Unbelieve. 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 Unbelieve.